there? Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show. It's Friday. We made it. Time to kick back, have a little brewski, maybe a little uh, something else, you know? So uh, do that and watch this. I'm going to show you something. I, I, well, let me tell you what I'm going to show you. So uh, on Fridays, we like to do interviews. I do. I like to have someone in here and have a, you know, a thoughtful conversation with them, a little longer, a little more about uh, life, the universe, that kind of thing, than about just product. So that's what we do if we can. And I didn't have anyone this week, but I was looking through the old uh, archives on the computer there, and I didn't realize that... Uh, Mammoth P, the guy that invented Mammoth P, Colin Bell, was here oh, a month ago or so. And when he was here, we actually sat down and had a little interview, talked right right, right here. And he's a, he's a pretty amazing guy, a serious scientist, but also a thoughtful individual looking out for a you know, for the bigger picture. So I think it's kind of an interesting interview. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, we talked for about five minutes before we actually started the interview, but the stuff we were talking about then was nearly as interesting as the stuff that was in the interview. So uh, it just picks up from where I turned the camera on record, and then about, you know, five minutes in, I'll go, hey there, Bob from Oregon, blah, 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 and then we'll start the interview. But I'm going to show you the whole thing because I think it'll be interesting to you. So uh, watch that, and then uh, take the weekend off. I'll see you on Monday. We'll... Uh, We'll get started back to some serious uh, learning about doing stuff and uh, indoor gardening kind of things. It's going to be fun. I love you, and I'll, uh, I'll see you a little later. Not valuable. And so yeah. we have these different research and development pipelines where we think about products, we think about validating it in the lab, and we think it should be doing physiologically. Then uh -huh. we think about that last part where it's a plant testing pipeline, uh -huh. where we have to make sure whatever we think is going on with the microbe, and we're hypothesizing it works very well in the soil, translates to the plant values. Uh -huh. And if it doesn't do that, then it's not a valuable technology for farmers. And so we have these pipelines and all of them have to be validated uh -huh. in order for us to uh, kind of take it to the next level and ultimately get it in the hands of farmers to try. So not just the efficacy, but the usability of it? Yeah, well you think about at the end of the day, what's that value proposition? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, that's kind of sound like a business guy. I never said value proposition until I started getting this business. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh -huh. But what's the value? You know, is it increased yield? Yeah. Is it increased quality in many cases? Yeah, but yield is very, very important. Uh -huh. And so if we have a product that we think will improve phosphorus cycling, like in Mammoth Peak, uh -huh. and then we think that that's gonna allow plants to take up more phosphorus, and we think that it's gonna improve plants' potential yield, uh -huh. well, ultimately, it needs to improve plants' potential yield. And so if we can't get that measure and quantify that, it doesn't matter if it does that in the lab it doesn't even matter if it does that, and we can measure plants taking it up. It has to increase yield, and we're not going to know that in the lab. We're not going to know that when we're developing this in a, in a petri dish or even in soils. Mm -hmm. It has to translate to plant growth, so we have to take uh, the plants full term mm -hmm. and actually measure that, quantify that data. So you do something like you see the BRICS levels or something like that of the measuring it and see that this thing you're, you're doing is having an instant response to it. That's valuable too, but not until the end. Or is that not even valuable in your? Are, are you? Well, I guess what I'm question. saying is, is there, are you? Is are you looking for a, any kind of? You poke it and it moves, and then let's explore that. Or are you looking? Does it only matter through the whole way? So I think I think I like to see the very most important uh, metric that matters, uh -huh. and in many cases, agriculture is yield. Uh -huh. And then I like to reverse engineer that uh -huh. and, and ask them, more why is this happening and how is this happening? Are there other values? So for sure, all these neat little things could be happening along the way, uh -huh. and you can look at them along the way, uh -huh. and you can assume, and this is what we did in uh -huh. research in academia, this could potentially lead to what's really valuable. But in, as, a, as a researcher and a, and a microbial company in, in the market and in industry, uh -huh. what we have to look at is that overall effectiveness and then we look at the many different things. So, uh, tomatoes is an example where bricks, bricks is measured often. Uh -huh. But he, there's not one tomato farmer that's told me that bricks is why he would use mammoth pea or use another product. It's about yield. Sure. And bricks is important, mm -hmm. but it's not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that we measure the yeah. most important thing. Well, I, I guess, you know, we've all had tomatoes and we're like, no, tomatoes don't taste like tomatoes. So the, the, the quality of it and those sorts of things, are, are those, I mean, can't those be more important than yield? They can be to the consumer, I think, and we talk about that all the time. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, if you'll talk to a farmer, yeah. he's not getting paid on quantity, on quality, he's yeah. getting paid on weight. Yeah. So And so it's that balance. Yeah, so let me ask you that then. Um, 
do you because I guess you're trying to I mean when you push a seed down into the soil and cover it over you're subverting nature <laughs> you know you're, you are far you're changing nature but we try to use these natural practices you know but use those in a way where we, we manipulate those to, to be better to be more uh, efficacious so do you think that that tomato that tastes better to a human is better for that human than a tomato that doesn't? Yeah, I think that's a, almost a proven fact now. Mm -hmm. And what we see is we're growing more food and it's less nutritious mm -hmm. across all agriculture segments. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating. It has to do with the flavor and all these other properties where somehow uh, in agriculture, we've, we've discovered a way to mass produce food that's less nutritious than we used to be able to. Uh -huh. And so we have to get back to that. I think there's a lot of value in that. I've talked to some interesting farmers in Australia where they've really flipped the model and farmers are starting to get incentivized for higher nutrition food and higher bricks content tomatoes as an example uh -huh. than the actual yield. They get that much more. And at the end of the day, farmers have the best intentions. All farmers mm -hmm. do, I believe mm -hmm. that. Uh, but they're running a business and they're supporting their families uh -huh. and yeah. they have to uh, pay attention yeah. to what they're making money on and in many cases if they're selling a product based on a yield and a weight uh -huh. they have to focus on sure that. Yeah. absolutely so it, it feels like the the cannabis industry it, it is kind of at the forefront because it's some place where, where quality is demanded you that's know right. more so yeah than, and uh, yeah so so I think that's evolving much quicker uh, mm -hmm. than in general agriculture. And general mm -hmm. agriculture moves uh, at a snail's pace relative yeah. to the cannabis mm -hmm. industry. And mm -hmm. it's one of the most fascinating things yeah. about this uh -huh. industry. And what you'll talk, what you'll find, and especially in the uh, the gardeners and the farmers in Oregon, which I just visited mm -hmm. this last mm -hmm. week, um, everyone feels very good. I asked everyone, how do you feel about the supply demand? Are you worried about it? Mm -hmm. And no one's worried about it because they feel like their quality is going to prevail. Mm -hmm. And the demand for their flower will be based on their quality, not their yield. And so it's critical. Do you think that that can bring that to the larger market of agriculture? I think it will over time. I think again, the larger market of agriculture moves at a much slower pace yeah. and then, than our wonderful industry here. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately it will be, and ultimately nutrition, and that's it's synonymous with quality in cannabis. Mm -hmm. This nutrition uh, metric uh, for food uh -huh. uh, is, is critical. Yeah. yeah. Let's stop and then start over with the Oregon thing. Okay. okay. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. I'm here with Colin from Mammoth P, Mammoth Microbes. Hey everyone, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> so, you came out to Oregon, you're here. We, yeah. We missed you, the time you've been gone. What are you, you've been looking around this time though, right? Yeah. What'd yeah. you find? So, uh, this has been a really fascinating trip for us. We started off at the Indo Expo in Portland, and then we were fortunate enough to meet some wonderful farmers uh, throughout Oregon uh -huh. who's who's welcomed us into their farms uh -huh. and, and let us see what's going on on the ground. I'm a research scientist and uh, first and foremost, and I don't learn behind a monitor uh, <laughs> on emails and as much as I do on the ground talking to people and mm -hmm. seeing what's up. And so uh, we've been welcomed with open arms. And that's we, what we do out here. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's what we were talking about. And I'll tell you uh -huh. what, this has been an eye-opening and, and really inspiring and humbling experience. The growers and farmers in Oregon are doing things much different than anyone else I've seen across the country where they're really trying to be stewards of the land and bring organic and natural processes and soil health processes in these practices into their large-scale uh, cannabis farms. On a grand scale of that, what impressions do you have that you think might be helpful to people that are uh, elsewhere in the country? Uh, so that's a great question. It's tricky because this is such a wonderful agriculture state and the climate's mm -hmm. really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so you could take advantage of a lot of the wonderful uh, aspects of nature, like the sun mm -hmm. uh, and the environment and the great soils uh, in other areas uh, where there's uh, more strict demands of seasonal demands, as sure. far as temperature, mm -hmm. uh, where where a lot of cannabis growing is confined to indoors. I think it's, it's, uh, it's harder. To yeah. be sustainable with oh, the land, yeah. but there's yeah. a lot of practices that the organ farmers are introducing as far as soil food webs, as far as interacting and allowing the plants to talk together through uh, long, continuous beds, uh -huh. and really nurturing uh, healthy soils. And uh, the practice of super soils is just prolific in many of the different gardens where you know you want to provide like a natural soil does mm -hmm. the nutrients that are that may be uh, present or available throughout most of the growth stage and then just supporting that with microbe life. 
So, um, do you think that the future of growing indoor for quality is natural soils in an indoor environment? I think that's the next step. I that's think, it. yeah, even the growers here understand that uh -huh. you can you can get premium quality plants through indoors because you can control the climate sure. better. And uh -huh. as a farmer, you know, I was in one of the farms in Grants Pass, and you know they were going to harvest in a week, and a hailstorm came. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. where the winds come. Yeah, and and all these challenges happen just like a regular farmer would yeah. experience. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. and yeah. I don't think there's crop insurance yet. Maybe one of these days. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Of course, you know, I think the one thing that's been lacking that uh, that everyone's coming on board with is the better understanding of natural soil health, uh -huh. of soil processes, of microbial processes to actually enrich the plant's ability to maximize its health, to maximize development uh, through those interactions. What, um, what are you going to take home from here that'll change how you do what you do? I, I'm still blown away. Yeah, I think I need to sleep on this for about a week. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was. We were talking about it earlier. Uh -huh. Every yeah. time I went to a farm, I learned more and more, and I got saturated every day. And at some point, uh, Julian, uh, one of our teammates who has turned around uh, Oregon with me, and uh -huh. uh, he'll be at Oregon Constant Gardener later today. Yeah. Um, he looked at me and he was kind of smiling and he was just like <laughs> almost stunned. Uh huh. He's like, Colin, what planet are we on? Man? <laughs> and, and I kind of smiled and I was like, huh? we're, we're on planet Southern Oregon. <laughs> and it's uh, one of the most amazing places on earth. Yeah. The, the openness for education and learning and community uh -huh. in the grower community here uh, is, has not been matched in any other place I've gone. And you know, I haven't gone everywhere. So uh -huh. there's the community in general is a wonderful community, the cannabis community. Mm -hmm. Everyone has welcomed us with open arms. Uh, some folks took their days off to tour us around the countryside to mm -hmm. visit uh, their friends farms and it's just been the most amazing experience one of the most amazing experiences I've ever uh, been a privilege to take a part of very cool very cool yeah. so uh, let's let's just we'll wrap up here <laughs> what um, Mammoth Pete what do you got going what are you thinking about for the future what are you working on yeah thanks very much and so you know uh, for those of you that don't know, Mammoth P is basically a liquid organic microbial soil additive. Uh, the P in Mammoth P stands for phosphorus, and we think that the microbes in Mammoth P are able to unlock those bound nutrients, uh, transforming phosphorus and micronutrients back into plant available forms to uh, naturally allow plants to maximize phosphorus uptake, and that's critical for plant health and growth. Sure. Uh -huh. And so, what we think about uh, moving forward is prescribed microbial applications to complement. Uh, plant nutrient demands throughout the plant growth stages. So the different stages of vegetative and bloom and flowering, these sorts of things, yep. things specific to those stages. Yep, we think it's really interesting. We think there are actually a lot of great products that do this also, mm -hmm. and so, but we think that we could complement uh, mm -hmm. plant's nitrogen demands, for example, during the veg stage. We think that we could really complement uh, the ability of plants to take up potassium or maybe do some uh, uh, perform some soil chelations uh, later on in the plant bloom stages uh, later on at the towards the end of the growth cycle just to uh -huh. maximize and finish off plants uh, very nicely how would that potassium need differ at the start of the vegetative cycle to in the flowering stage of the cycle are it very yeah. similar or very are different I you know I think about it as very similar but honestly the more complex the structures of the plants get the more potassium in particular the plant needs mm -hmm. to facilitate those cellular uh, physiological processes potassium is a fascinating nutrient uh, and it's not necessarily incorporated in any mm -hmm. biomass, but it's used for, it's used for uh, ion pumps mm -hmm. to facilitate most processes that mm -hmm. cells have to perform. And so as these flowering sites and the buds thicken and grow, there's a lot more mass and density mm -hmm. and, and, and cellular working that, that occurs. And so uh, it, at some stage later on in the plant growth stage, the cycle of uh, potassium, inevitably becomes limiting unless it continue to be taken up throughout that bloom cycle for sure so that that's a it's a, a choke point that it, it can't get enough a of the potential is a choke point potential. and, and uh -huh. if you can allow uh, allow that to freely flow uh, as soon as a plant gets stifled by any one nutrient it staggers even if you can't noticeably see the plant sure. there's these little lockout or, mm -hmm. or, or stress events uh -huh. what you want to do and how we think about using microbes in general uh -huh. is to allow the the bioavailability of all the nutrients uh -huh. as much as possible 
to allow the plants to take up those nutrients when they need them uh -huh. so plants don't ever feel like they have these micro starvation events uh, to stifle any growth. So why wouldn't I just be pumping potassium all the way through and it wouldn't be using it when it didn't need and would be when it would? Well, you know, I think that, you know, as these demands increase, you want to be... Uh, in want to tune be with them? You want to be in tune with the when your plant needs the, ni the nutrients and you mm -hmm. want to be efficient. Sure. And I'm not sure, and you know, we've talked about this before earlier today, where, you know, if we can deliver the nutrients the plants need when they need them, mm -hmm. and we don't overdo it, we're being responsible farmers. Mm -hmm. And so being yeah. in tune with those growth stages when in the and, and in tune with when those nutrients and how those nutrients are available, mm -hmm. you can really be in sync, not only with what your plant needs, but what the environment needs. Do you think we'll ever be able to quantify that? We'll ever know the plant well enough we know that we know what it needs? I think that we're gonna know more uh, five years from now than we know now. Mm -hmm. I think it's a process for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, none of these questions are easy. You start talking about plant microbe interactions and these soil sure. uh, complexities. I know when I was a, a new graduate student, uh, just working on my PhD, we knew a lot less about soil microbial plant interactions than we do today. Wow. And it's continuing to grow. And as we learn more about the interactions and get smarter as a, in, in general and science matures in this particular area, we're gonna be able to continue to uh, work with plants and nutrient efficiencies with precision. I think that there's actually a lot of great work that's already been done. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some really, really sophisticated grow operations, especially in the hydroponic systems where they try to dial this in uh, with precision using not only uh, you know the nutrients mm -hmm. but the right genetics and the right precision technologies and monitoring mm -hmm. to understand this do you think that that's a more in the hydroponic is a more managed environment to where you could learn lessons that you could take to soil I think I think you can learn a lot about the plant demands mm -hmm. but then there's a there's a real complexity and how those nutrients uh, bind or, or become available in a soil in a more complex substrate. Uh -huh. And the more complex that soil environment substrate is, sure. uh, the, it becomes much more complex. And so that's really where this uh, understanding of microbial processes mm -hmm. and how they actually cycle nutrients mm -hmm. in that soil matrix uh -huh. uh, is, is critical. And we have a lot to learn there, but uh, we're, we're making really good progress in that area. Very cool. Yeah. I've asked you too much already. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you on Monday.